African Union's new Partnership for Africa's Development, or NEPART, works to raise the amount and quality of food that Africa produces in order to make families more food secure and exports more profitable. To this end, NEPART brings together all the organizations involved in Africa's agriculture and helps them voice their needs and coordinate their work. The framework guiding this work is CADAP, the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program developed and led by African nations. Established as part of NEPART, CADAP was endorsed by the African Union Assembly in July 2003. CADAP works under four pillars, each dealing with key issues in African agriculture. They are land and water management, rural infrastructure and trade-related capacities for market access, increasing food supply and reducing hunger, and lastly, agricultural research, technology dissemination and adoption. In 2003, in Maputo, Mozambique, African heads of state set targets of allocating 10% of national budgets to agriculture by 2008 and of reaching national agricultural growth rates of 6%. The 10% commitment was designed to put African countries on track to reach the first millennium development goal of cutting poverty and hunger in half by 2015. When we had the food crisis, we thought the food crisis actually was designed for Africa, to wake up Africa, because the only place in the whole world that you can ex truly expand agriculture is Africa. We've got to farm, we've got to feed ourselves, we've got to cut down imports, and through these efforts, enrich our villages so that there will be a stronger middle class that will stabilize democracy and also bring greater contentment to our people. Libya hosted the 13th session of the Assembly of Heads of State of the African Union in July 2009. The summit focused on the theme, investing in agriculture for economic growth and food security. Serving as an overview of progress over the last five years, CADAP Day took place on the fringes of the summit. Delegates discussed matters like climate change, regional agricultural trade and market systems, stimulating economic transformation and growth of African agriculture, investment financing in African agriculture, as well as stimulating participation of the ultra-poor in rural economic activities. Il faut dire que le CADEP ou PDDA euh, est le cadre de référence, il constitue le cadre de référence du développement du secteur agricole. Donc, euh, il ne, la question n'est pas de savoir s'il s'insère dans l'agenda de l'Union africaine. Il fait partie intrinsèquement de l'agenda de l'Union africaine dans la mesure où il est le seul cadre de référence existant pour le secteur agricole. Et cela euh, nous, nous permet euh, d'accélérer le processus de développement de ce secteur, fondamentalement pour, pour trois raisons. Premièrement, parce que nous parlons le même langage lorsque nous discutons de politique agricole. Parler le même langage ne veut pas dire être d'accord sur tout. Deuxièmement, vis-à-vis -vis des partenaires, il permet d'avoir un cadre de référence cohérent. Donc on peut mobiliser des ressources sur la base d'un cadre cohérent. Et puis, euh, euh, troisièmement, cela nous permet véritablement d'évaluer l'atteinte de l'objectif de Maputo concernant les, les 10% d'investissement de ressources publiques dans le, le secteur agricole. CADAP Day was designed as an inclusive dialogue platform, bringing together key role players like political leaders, farmers, civil society organizations, think tank institutions, the private sector and development partners. The day provided stakeholders a unique opportunity to engage and genuinely converse on progress, challenges and lessons in the implementation of CADAP since 2003. The partners you know, who attended recommitted themselves to supporting CADAP. The African ministers that I came recommitted themselves to supporting CADAP. There was a reaffirmation that CADAP is the only route to the future of African agriculture. We cannot have parallel processes or disjointed 
voices around uh, supporting African agriculture, but it's got to be one, and that is actually through CADAP. So this is a collective African voice, and this was reaffirmed during the CADAP day when we met in Tripoli. Our commitment to CADAP is strong, but we need to see credible business practices established, and we see the next CADAP partnership platform in November as pivotal. And we're calling on both ourselves and the African organizations that lead CADAP to ensure that the preparations are in place for concrete decisions to be made at the CADAP platform partnership meeting in November. Lively panel discussions were held by ministers of agriculture from various member states. Questions from the floor and from the media set the tone and ministers were quizzed, among other questions, about their respective countries' progress in respect of the 10% budgetary targets for agriculture as agreed to at the 2003 Maputo summit. Uh, the agricultural sectors in different countries are not the same and the budgets are not the same. So when you say 10% of the budget, uh, we only calculate what goes uh, in the uh, sector of agriculture. For, for example, in Egypt we have the sector of agriculture and the sector of irrigation, which are related. I mean, anything that is done in irrigation helps agriculture. I would also include that any other uh, spending in infrastructure is also helping agriculture. If you have a new road, if you have a new airport, if you have a new port, all this would lead to the enhancement of the agricultural sector. We have to take stock of what is happening. We have to look at how agriculture is performing. We have to see, are we doing it correctly? Do we have food security? Have we lived to the principles for which the CADAP was put in place, which the heads of state expect from us and from they themselves as leaders of Africa? So CADAP Day is extremely important. CADAP Day was all about profiting from information exchange. We interviewed some of the stakeholders for their take on these issues. NEPAD has urged African countries to commit 10% of their national budgets to agriculture by 2015. How are countries measuring up to the Maputo Declaration? You know, all is not, uh, not so bad. There has been a talk that uh, Countries are not committed to the principles of 10% uh, budget allocation uh, to national budget allocation to agriculture. I see countries coming up. And I see that uh, quite soon or later, we are going to have, in fact, uh, much more than 10%. Some countries already have surpassed the 10%. Yes, the numbers are low. But because of the limitations of resources on the continent, and also given the poverty, and then the needs, the needs are many. We have malaria, we have HIV AIDS, we have poor infrastructure, we have water. So I think uh, spreading the resource thinly is also a big challenge for us, and uh, that is why the 10% allocation to agriculture of their national budgets has not been achieved. But we have about 15 to 20 countries already, and more are indicating that they are going to have even uh, much more than 10%. So all is not lost. Ainda há muitos países que devem fazer esforço como o nosso. Nós partimos de 4% para 6, agora estamos em 8, e estamos a caminhar para os 10%. With the Maputo 2003 declaration, where um, nation, nations were aged in Africa to put at least 10%, of the national budget uh, to uh, agriculture. The Malay government took that seriously. And uh, now I'm pleased to inform you that at the moment we are at 14% of the national budget which is put in agriculture. Nigeria has a commercial agricultural portfolio with the World Bank, all in getting Nigeria um, uh, total budget allocation to increase from what it was in just 2003 of about 3% of our total budget portfolio to about 15%. As we are speaking, we hope we have about 7% this year of 2008 budget. Uh, we know the CADAP is saying 10% budget. That's the benchmark. 
But next year we are going to 12 percent, 12, 13 percent. So we're really moving uh, well on that direction. We haven't gotten there. We are at 6.6 percent, but we, we have achieved growth beyond what was targeted using the 10 percent. The real factor is management of what you have. So in Rwanda, we, we have fewer resources than probably many other countries, but we do manage them well enough to give uh, probably uh, uh, much better results than we would have gotten. If you have to define the areas which agriculture covers in this regard of 10% budget allocation, we are looking, looking at even forestry. We are looking at water for agriculture, including irrigation. We are looking at uh, rural feeder roads. All those impact on agriculture. So agriculture cuts across a number of sectors. But however, we had to delineate agriculture from the main roads, from the big water dams. But the water for irrigation, the water which facilitates agriculture, that one is included in the, what we call core functions of agriculture. In your opinion, what are the constraints to compliance with the African Union's decision on the 10%? Several constraints. One of them uh, is uh, conflicting demands on our small budgets. As African countries, we still have quite small budgets. Our resource bases are limited when it comes to budgets. So you find that um, there are needs to invest in infrastructure, needs to invest in social services, needs to invest in all sorts of things. Some, and also, sometimes, we forget the... In our urge to develop, we don't see agriculture as one of those things that will take us towards that development. So we, we, we really overlook that. And yet, we still have a huge percent of our population in agriculture. We need a political will, which is lacking in some of these uh, countries. Uh, we need a body decision because uh, uh, if you are looking at improvement on the economies, looking at food, and that once you sort out that, the economy will start improving. Well, there are two, three types of constraints to the uh, fulfillment of the Maputo Declaration. One is that uh, the countries do not have uh, adequate uh, resources from the taxes that they collect or they generate to meet the 10% target. The second one is um, a political one, that although there was that political decision, there is obviously lack of political commitment to fulfilling that decision. I'll give you a typical example. Those countries that have achieved 10% and more, it has been thanks to the leadership and the political commitment. The third one, as I said, is that our own uh, bureaucrats uh, have continued with business as usual in the sense that they have not looked at agriculture as a basis for social and economic uh, transformation. La première, c'est que il y avait un gap entre l'affirmation de la priorité du secteur agricole et la réalité des investissements. Et la deuxième, c'est que Si on ne fixait pas un, un objectif qui puisse permettre de traduire la priorité, on aurait peu de motivation politique à aller dans cette direction. Donc, je ne veux pas m'attarder sur le fait de savoir comment on va mesurer si c'est 10%, 8%, 7%, 6%. Ce qui est extrêmement important, c'est de voir qu'il y a une augmentation des ressources publiques investies dans l'agriculture.